everybody, it's Stephen Brook and welcome to my YouTube channel on architectural photography and composition. I want to talk today about your digital art gallery and how to put art images into your photographs. Now, why would you need to do this? Well, if you've done this work for a while, then you know that there are times when you are asked to photograph a project before it's really finished and before maybe the furniture is in, or especially if the artwork isn't in. And I've had this happen on a number of occasions, particularly with healthcare facilities, because you need to be in there before um, the health services take control of the building, because once they're in there and patients are in there, they don't want you around. I've had other circumstances where my clients have done a wonderful job and the clients have come in and put really hideous artwork in. And of course, that's a problem. So back in the days before digital, if you wanted to replace artwork or bring artwork in, you had to get to a gallery, you had to pick the things that you wanted, you had to pay for insurance and a van to bring them over. And then if you were going to put them on the walls, how are you going to hang them on the walls? And if you put nails in, how are you going to fix that? It was an expensive operation. So if you didn't want to do that, then you would either shoot the job and have these empty walls or which is really unfortunate, you would have to go off your better shots because you couldn't have this huge expanse of a blank wall. You had to reframe your images so that you wouldn't have this empty wall uh, and it wouldn't be good for the composition. It just it would look like you didn't know what you were doing. So now it is possible to put any kind of artwork into your job. Here's a perfect example. This is a, a, a healthcare facility, and we had to photograph this before any of the artwork was in there because this was a child's oncology unit. And so what I did here is we figured out a piece of artwork from one of mine that would go in, and we added this nice flower in there. Now, this wasn't ultimately the artwork that went in, but I needed something in this space to hold that wall because we knew a piece of art was going to go in there. So here is the workflow, and this workflow is in my book, Architectural Photography and Composition. Uh, there's a, it's very detailed, but let's go through this anyway, the steps that you need to take an image and insert it into your interior image as a piece of artwork. First of all, on your basic photograph, do all the Photoshop manipulations except sharpening. You need to get everything, as we've described in the past, you need to get everything perfect, but don't do the sharpening. Then you need to select the artwork, paste it into the interior, adjust it for size, brightness, contrast, so it looks like it really belongs there. And if it's off axis, you have to adjust the shape to follow the lines of the vanishing point. I'm going to do a, a little demo to show you. And then you can add a stroke, which would be like an outline. You can bevel the stroke if you want to create a frame. And then you can add an appropriate shadow line to approximate the ambient lighting. Make final adjustments, flatten the image, and then sharpen. The reason you do this at the end is so that the artwork that you add and your image are all sharpened exactly the same way. So here's a perfect example. This is Miami International Airport. And this wall needed a piece of artwork and it wasn't ready. So there was a proposal of actually that I made and I used this a uh, piece of artwork, this gr uh, graphic of mine, and installed it into the space where it was going to go. So let me take a moment and let's just go through the steps that I took to get it to this point. So first of all, here is my space. Everything else is done. People are back there. They're not prominent. Everything is set up. And here is the piece of artwork that we're going to use. So. The first thing, we're going to take the artwork, copy it, and paste it in. Then we're going to move it to the approximate location that it's going to go. 
Now I put a guide in and another guide because I want to make sure my verticals on my artwork when I change this absolutely are perfectly parallel. Then I make a transformation on the artwork and notice that I'm following the perspective of the shot so it looks like it belongs in there. Now I'm going to clear the guides and then I'm going to do a layer style and let me back up a little. The first thing I want to do is I want to put a stroke in here, which is an outline. And I've made this in gray. Normally I wouldn't do it in gray just so that you can see what's going on here. Then the next thing I want to do, I'm going to give this a frame. So I'm going to, I'm going to hit the bevel. And that, and the bevel, is going to give the appearance of a frame. This is designed to do exactly that. And then the last thing, which is really important and is wonderful for creating the illusion is I'm going to add a drop shadow. Now the most of the light, let's take a back up. Most of the light is coming from these overheads. So my shadow is going to be down and to the left. So again, let's take a look at the image without anything. And this is with a stroke, with a bevel and with a drop shadow. Once everything is done, then I can um, flatten the image out and then sharpen the whole thing. In this interior by Dennis Jenkins, there was a piece of artwork over the bed that was too small, also didn't look very good. So I went to his studio and took a photograph of the painting he wanted to use, dropped it in, put a frame around it, didn't bevel it because this was going to be as if it were a thin black frame and then put a little bit of a shadow line down. In this case, we actually made this on our computer. We made this artwork and then dropped it in to this living room. You can also do this with sculpture. And again, back in the days before film, to bring a piece of sculpture into a job was a very costly uh, proposition because especially having to pay for the um, insurance on this. And if something happened to it, whether you liked it or not, if you broke it, you bought it. So when you drop a piece of sculpture in, it's really important to get the lighting to balance and then to put this shadow line in as if it were properly lit in the room. Now you can also use this technique if you have a piece of artwork you would like to sell to a client and you have a photograph of their site. Now for me, this was a job in Sarasota, Florida, and this is a pretty big painting and I was not going to haul this thing over there on the chance that they might not like it. So what I did was I took a picture of it, put it in the site, dropped it in, put my shadow lines and uh, made this as my presentation. You can use the same technique for adding an image to a TV screen. Now, if you've taken photographs like this with a TV on, you know, there's, it's either blurry, it's way overexposed. So when I take photographs and there's a TV in the room, I turn the TV off knowing that post-production, I'm going to stick some image in there. This was the interior of a famous ball player. And what I did was I went to their site and I had a, uh, an image that I could use that was um, free to use of the same ball player. And I put it in to his TV. If you have TV screens in a big commercial space, Sometimes they have television shows on whatever. What I did is I took this is for Leon Medical. I got a copy of their logo, copied it and pasted it into um, the TV screens. Now there's something that I do that makes this operation with a television look a little bit more real. When I paste it in, you have a layer that's in there at 100%. I will knock the layer back to about 90% so that if there are some reflections in the room on the TV, you'll see the image that I dropped in, but you'll also see these reflections, which makes it look real. Now, please, for television images, have your own collection of images. 
as a fellow photographer, don't go to Google Images and uh, violate somebody else's copyright. Have skies, have golf courses, have landscape, have things that belong to you that you can drop into TV screens. So these techniques and a lot of others are in my book, uh, Architectural Photography and Composition. Also, if you get a chance, have a look at stephenbrookeditions.com. I have several of my digital books that were in print at one time and now are available much less expensively as uh, ebooks. stephenbrookephotography.com to have a look at my textbook. And again, if you like these videos, give them a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button so you can see more videos like this. Thanks for visiting and I look forward to seeing you again soon.